My first entrance was with a neon writer. And everyone was like, you are tracing. Because everybody was like fresh off that's those scandals. Funny thing is the neon writer, I did it originally as an experiment uh, to see how far I could push things. I remember the SteelSeries guys were like, you know, we'll just do like some little video thing. And we said, yeah. that's not enough. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Skin Origins, uh, a new piece of CS Money skin content where we take a deep dive into the minds of the guys behind the skins, uh, the big brains that brought your luxury items into the game. And today, I am joined by Puffin, best known as the designer of the Neon Rider collection and the Dragonfire would you say? Would you say that's fair? That's what you're best known for in terms of skin contributions. Yeah, I, I could say that. Um, I've also made some other one-off skins. I think the other series I'm known for is the Offworld. But in terms of covert tier, I'd say the Neon Riders become what I'm best known for. Right. Those are your diamonds. So you said you've been making skins for quite some time. Uh, so yeah. I'm I'm assuming that that if you've been designing skins for this long, that you've been an artist or a creative person for even longer. Um, yeah. Was was your was your move towards creating digital items in uh, you know a, a popular globally played FPS game a surprise to the people around you? Uh, not really. Uh, I've been I've been playing CS:GO since 1999, so since oh, beta that's, one. So, that's so since good I was to a hear. kid. Yeah, uh, yeah. I just remember the first time playing it. Me and my friends were in a land cafe, and we actually had no idea how to buy. I have this this okay. vivid memory. <laughs> it's it's like I don't get it. You're just you're stuck with a Glock. This game sucks. And right. like three weeks later, everybody was playing it, and we'd all figured it out. And it's been like probably a twenty year journey towards this point. So for me, I was always like, I want to play. I want to do something for Counter Strike or one of these games that I love and. When the CSGO workshop opened up, I kind of observed it for a while and decided to jump in at, uh, I'd say it's around the time that the Howl and the Griffin controversy happened. Yeah. So right. it was very memorable because my first entrance was with a, a hand-painted neon writer and everyone was like, you are tracing. Because everybody was like fresh off that s those scandals, you know what I mean? So they yeah. just assumed yeah, yeah, anybody 100%. coming in with anything painted was like- It was all under a microscope. Yeah, it was it was all everything was like contraband. The contraband stuff was happening. So my first experience was everyone saying, "You're cheating, you're tracing," and I had to I had to basically put together a GIF showing my Photoshop file from start to finish, saying like, "This is how I painted it." I here's my industry background because I worked in the game industry before, and I finally that's how I finally got accepted into the scene. Um, funny thing is, the Neon Rider I did it originally as an experiment uh, to see how far I could push things. And I never thought it would get in. So funny how that panned out. I thought I thought that would be too loud for like CSGO. So Right. So you you were thinking that just the color scheme and, and the overall just vibe of it was like too much for, for, for CS. Yeah, I told my I told my buddies like, let's see how far we can push this before we get our heads bitten off. So right. the neon rider was out. I'm like, let me go just like full on neon colors. Like let's see if that even flies with this community. And uh, sure enough, people liked it. And I was surprised by that. And when it got accepted, I was double surprised. I was like, holy crap. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but the first Neon Rider introduction was the MAC-10, correct? Yeah, the MAC-10. And we did a little yeah. video for it. That's one thing that was kind of uh, unique to us. We do promo videos for every skin that we did right. at the time. Uh I think I think that doing that is actually a great idea. Um, I think that you know there's there's a lot of noise on the market, um, and I'm mm -hmm. sure that there's actually a lot of great design skins or a lot of great ideas that maybe aren't entirely flushed out or or just aren't aren't marketed properly, aren't aren't presented yep. to the public properly. And if I think if you can start you know crossing those bridges and if you can start uh, presenting your art and presenting your contributions in a package like that, it's far more digestible, becomes far more popular. So you know if if I had to kind of touch on like what's the secret of your success? Um, we, you clearly consider all of these things important parts of, of being a, 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 an artist on the workshop. Yeah, the, the workshop system, uh, dating back to TF2, a lot of it has been dependent from what I've noticed on how well you market yourself. So for example, you need to go interact with communities outside of the Steam workshop sometimes, like the subreddits, Twitter. Uh, so having something that kind of gets people's eyes on your product, so for example, your skin or your design, uh, it goes a long way. 
like the Dragonfire, for example, wouldn't have gotten as big as it had unless we'd made that promo video for it, in my opinion. And Valve, I guess, they they compensate us well enough that I've always felt like just doing a skin was not enough. So for us, it was always like, let's go that extra mile. Let's make a video for it. Let's do some something to kind of elevate it and maybe it'll spread outside of CSGO. You know what I mean? Like we did the Neon Rider product line recently. I don't know if you remember the Steel Series collab. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did a, we did yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, we did, right, we right, did a right. collaboration with Steel Series. Yep, last year and uh I remember the Steel Series guys were like, you know, we'll just do like some little video thing and we said, yeah. that's not enough. Let's uh <laughs> leave it Let's to us on. to do the marketing aspect of it. Yeah, and we went yeah. and did like a live action thing and I dressed up as the neon rider. We went to an abandoned house, <laughs> busted <laughs> up. We did like this crazy <laughs> CG thing. But to me that's just like how we give back, I guess. Considering yeah, no, no, that, you know, I, Valve treats us so well inside their ecosystem, I'm like, this is the least we could do. It's clearly not a lazy approach. Um, mm. you're, you're clearly going beyond it. And I think that, you know, that's, that's one of these ideas that the skins become more. Skins become more than just cosmetics, in my opinion. I think, you know, for, yeah. for a lot of people who play Counter-Strike, skins actually become an expression of self. Um, yep. And uh, that, that's a really important connection that some people make to CSGO. Is it safe to assume that you, you own Counter-Strike skins? You own a bunch of skins? Yep. If you had to empty the inventory, you were left with one, one skin. You could only keep one, which is the one that you just couldn't let go of. The Og Akibara. That's Ooh. my favorite one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old yeah, school, but that, that's my favorite one. So I was going to say, that's, that's actually, that's, I think that's one of those skins that like uh, was a bit ahead of its time uh, in terms of like detailing and, and color schemes and whatnot. If, if, that's, your, if that's your top dog, then uh, what are your three other favorite skins? that are not your own. Okay, I'd say, um, just as a skin designer, I'd say that the ones that I like the most, gold is gonna go to one people might not expect, but the Galil Chatterbox. Uh, it's one of my favorites in terms of integrating uh, design into the way the gun works. So every time it shoots, basically, as the mouth opens. it ejects, ejects rounds, it basically opens the mouth. That's my gold. It's one of my favorite uh, ones where I was like, damn, I wish I'd thought of that first. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> silver, I'd give it to the Op Worm God. I really like the okay. design of that one, like how it's kind of minimalist, but it's just the way the tentacles are integrated on it are really clean, in my opinion. I like the in-game inspect on it. And uh, I guess bronze, I'd give it to the Glock Water Elemental, one of the first uh, hand-painted style skins in the workshop that got in. So that one, in terms, for me, was kind of like a big inspiration as to what can be done with skins. Maybe not going for the most popular style. It was, for me, it's more of a technical side of things, you know? Yeah, I like the fact that you bring up the the water elemental um, and being like a hand-painted type vibe. Uh, you know, I said top three. If I, had, if I had given you a fourth, is the fire elemental up there too? Yeah, I could see that. And the chatterbox, that's a good shout. I own a chatterbox for that exact reason. Since clearly you've been inspired by other skin makers, I just wanted to ask if uh, if you had to, de to design a new skin tomorrow, uh, is there any particular artist that kind of comes to mind in terms of collaborating with? Um, he hasn't been active in a while, but one of the first people I met in the workshop was called Ego Death, and he's, he is the designer of the Galil Chatterbox. Um, he kind of comes on and off sporadically. So he, he's one of those guys that likes to like kind of figure out a gimmick or figure okay. out a cool way to integrate the design onto the skin. So, you know, when I saw him do the Galil Chatterbox, I'm like, okay, I got to talk to this guy. So I can kind of like try to think more like him. Right. Uh, sometimes uh, when, you're when you're designing skins, like there is two approaches. There's the one where it's just the cool design. There's one where you kind of try to go for the gimmick side of things. And then there's option three where you integrate both in a clever manner. But sometimes that's hard to come by. But, you know, he was the guy that did the, the Chatterbox and... I always was like, <laughs> I admire, yeah. I admire that type of galaxy type brain of thinking. thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I, I get, right, I can get right behind you with that one, man. I've been asking the the creators today kind of questions about going beyond uh, just weapon skins, agent skins, obviously being you know newly introduced and gloves just behind it. If I were to you know bring up the prospect of designing a knife, gloves, agent skins, you know, if that door were to open, if all of those doors were to open suddenly, um, is there something right there that kind of like would, would entice you? Is there something there that you think you'd jump on? Yeah, um, I would say we've 
kind of been beaten to the punch for gloves because there's already kind of like a neon rider style glove that's been created for yeah, CS:GO. Like once yeah. I saw the once I saw those, I was like, "That's freaking sick." Um, <laughs> wish, wish we'd had the chance to do those, but uh, we actually did try to design our own knife a few years ago because um, what we've learned from working in the workshop for a long time is sometimes if you propose the idea well enough to Valve, they'll go for it. So I work with somebody called uh, Andrew Helenick. And years ago, he proposed basically a courier for Dota 2. He created a chicken courier. Nobody asked him to do that. It wasn't inside Dota 2. And Valve ended up accepting it. And that kind of set the basis for couriers going forward. So in CSGO, we kind of tried to do the same thing with a knife called the Tiger Shark. We actually like reverse engineered everything, created a promo video for it. Um, they didn't quite go for it, but it hasn't stopped us from trying these ideas. So I do think uh, someday maybe they'll open up this aspect to the workshop scene. Uh, if you notice, there's a meme about Zeus skins that's been going on yeah, for years now. Of course. You know, never never ending Zeus skin memes. That would be really easy to do. Um, but I would I would probably go for like a knife skin if I had that opportunity. That'd be fun. Yeah. If if the knife if the knife skins opened up um, and you weren't asked to model a skin but maybe just make a make a skin for the the pre existing knife models that are already in the game would would that kind of strike you as a bit of a disappointment or do you have a preference at all in that regard or to use it just like the chance to work on anything <laughs> knife related would be big honestly yeah whatever whatever they open up to us it's another opportunity for us to contribute to the game so whenever whenever they open anything up I'm like awesome cool yeah another door like when they open stickers when they opened all that stuff it's like. We just jump in, experiment, and see if we have fun with it. What about agents? Uh, just off off the top of your head, if uh, if if agents were to become uh, you know something that you guys could contribute towards, um, do you, do you think that uh, the workshop would be able to pump up some really cool stuff? I would probably create agents that would really annoy people in the competitive <laughs> scene. So just to give you an idea, like the skins, the skins I tend to gravitate towards are very vibrant, very loud. So yeah. let's say I did like a neon rider with a super bright helmet. I'm like. Yeah, I mean, All I'm right. sure people yeah. would hate it. So, <laughs> I'd love, I'd love to do it, you know. It, uh, but I'm sure, like the stuff that would be most popular is very muted, very like low key stuff that blends into the environments well. Um, not quite my style, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I, there'd be a scene for it. You know what I mean? The thing with the Neon Rider is that obviously it's a skin that um, it's got a beautiful artwork to it. All right. First and mm -hmm. foremost, like uh, it's it's well designed. There's a lot of nice details on it that, in my personal opinion, you're, you're never going to want to cover up. But one aspect when it comes to Counter Strike and skins is obviously the existence of stickers. Um, yep. And uh, when creators are are designing skins, I'm always curious: is that something you think about when you're when you're making skins? Do you think about where players may be placing the stickers, <laughs> or do you think about the color combinations, or are you just there to just pump out badass art? Um, and you know, people can work around you. In terms of the sticker thing, I'll I'll be honest. Like, it's one of those things that whenever I finish a skin, I'm always like, Sh I completely forgot to think about that. Like, ninety percent of the time, that's what ends up happening. Um, but I know other skin designers that, for example, they'll create a skin that's just made to be the sticker canvas. You know, they yeah. try to create it kind of like uh, less loud, just so it has like good slots for uh, stickers. I've been trying to come up with a skin that, for example, would uh, be complementary to certain stick and sticker packs. So, for example, like putting a sticker in a certain place, like elevates some sort of design. I don't know. Yep. There's people that have done stuff like that, where if you put a certain sticker in a certain spot, it just looks funny or creates some sort of interesting gimmicky effect. Um, but in regards to me, I think I'm too ADD and I tend to forget small details like that when sure. I'm laying out my stuff. Um, so, for me, yeah, it's. I've just noticed, yeah, my skins don't tend to be as much of a sticker bait as right. some of the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to move to some more questions, maybe just about the, you know, your skins and your contributions and whatnot. Um, uh, you know, I was told that, that one of the AK Neon Riders uh, concepts has a racer standing with his helmet open and a girl there. Uh, and then in the end, you ended up closing it. You removed the the, the, the face of, uh, of, of of the neon rider himself. You know, you gave him that anonymous edge. What was kind of behind that decision? Um, and and do you do you ever yeah. like wish you had backpedaled and maybe not gone down this road, or are you firm happy with your final decisions? No, like uh, uh, the one thing I've always tried to do with my skins. I mean, there's there's no wrong approach. The CS:GO skin community has so many different things you can do in it, and for all kinds of different skill levels as well. But uh, 
for the neon rider, I always treated each one. I'd only do one a year. That that was always like my rule that I set for myself for the neon rider. And this year's one is currently pending as well. But uh, for that one, I wanted to actually make it so we'd reveal the identity of the neon rider. So kind of an open helmet approach. And okay. One important thing about working with the CSGO community is uh, listening to feedback. And I think Valve is also aware about this as well. It's like, if people are really passionate about something, like for example, I started hearing everyone saying like, keep the helmet closed, we want it to be a mystery. Like, I had to take that seriously, you know, especially when, I, when like you got like 80 comments or something on Reddit stating that aspect. You're like, okay, maybe this isn't the right direction for it. So I revised it and re-released a, a different version with the helmet closed. And that's the one that ended up getting in. And I'm not sure what that correlates to. I don't know if Valve was also paying attention to what people were saying about it, but listening to the community is very important for making the design the best it can be. So sometimes I'll think that something is the right direction to go with for skin, yeah. uh, but I'll find out very quickly from the community that they're not passionate about it. So. That's always been some back and forth that you get in this kind of like workshop community. Uh, you have to keep your keep your ears open for certain types of feedback. Yeah, keep your ears open and your uh, your ego subdued. I, I think in a little bit <laughs> yeah, of a way, right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, uh, definitely. It, it I think boils down to again being bigger than just some CS:GO skins, and uh, and that's clear with uh, the the Steel Series collaboration as well. So really cool, man. It's, it's, again, it's, it's just nice to see, you know, some people just, so, like you said, this, the, the CSGO workshop community has uh, different approaches. There's people who create tons of different types of skins. Uh, there's guys who will just try to just, you know, pump out a bunch of awesome designs, see what sticks. Um, I, I really respect the fact that you have uh, a tight grip on this one, you know, releasing mm -hmm. only one a year. Oh, no. Uh, the, the thing I'll just say is, Every creator I've talked to has had such a different approach to it. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm going to reiterate that there's no wrong approach. But for me, I have a really hard time making skins unless I have a very good idea for it. That's why I'm kind of lower output compared to other people. Um, you know, there's the quality approach. There's a quantity approach. There's a mixed approach. There's making patterns approach, hand painted approach. Um, I, I tend to fall more into like just the more slower and deliberate I'm more of a turtle when it comes to skin making because yeah. I just want to yeah, think yeah. it through. I want to take my time on it. I want to make sure I'm happy with it. You know what I mean? Um, every time I've tried to go against that rule, man, I've made some very right. forgettable stuff yeah. that I'm not yeah, yeah. super proud of. So to close out, you know, what's, what's, you said, you said this year's Neon Riders under construction. What else you got going on, man? What's, what's, uh, what's, what's Puffin's projects at the moment? Got some Egyptian themed skins, and I'm also planning on uh, revisiting the Off World series. So, okay. yeah, stay tuned. It's been quiet so far because 2020 was one hell of a year. So, yeah. that kind of had a bit of a damper on the creativity aspect, but uh, we're always cooking on something. From, from the other end, man, may I say, like, uh, we're always hungry. So, so yeah. I hope you're in a good place, man. I hope you found that creative flow. Uh, and I very much look forward to your next contribution uh, and inclusion to the never-ending CSGO Steam Workshop. This, ladies and gentlemen, was Skin Origins with Puffin, and uh, it was an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you for your time. Pleasure.